Now, in the uh, this is a continuation of our value for money uh, exercise, and this time we're going to try to show if we have this public uh, option or public comparator, as some of these uh, things call it. We're going to put in risk. We're going to use the index function for people who have uh, made some of looked at some of these other videos. There's a, quite a bit of redundancy in here. Okay, so we've got you know we can this time we can say okay we've got a base case here if everything works out this is what's going to happen but then we have a worst case a few things can happen let's say our construction period goes to five years our o and m cost goes up uh, our availability goes down and then we have a series of sensitivity cases where we just this one just takes the uh, 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 capital cost from the base case but all the rest of it it keeps in I mean the worst case and then it keeps it in the base case this takes the base case but makes a worst case construction this takes the base case but makes a worst case uh, uh, O&M and this makes the availability go down and then we have to do the really hard part which is assign probabilities to all of these cases 40 percent chance of the base 20% chance everything goes wrong, 20% chance, so we've got a total of 40% chance of a overrun, 5% chance of a construction cost and all this. And if you want to do something a little fancier, you select this area and you go to home and you go to conditional formatting and you go to a new rule. And on the new rule, you put it, you say use a formula and the formula is that this number, and you take the horizontal of that offset, does not equal uh, the base case. And then you take this one and just leave the F4 on the column, and you go to a format. And please, if you're just kind of starting this stuff, don't worry too much about this uh, conditional formatting right now. Okay, but it just illustrates uh, what's going on now. What what we're going to do is. Last time we computed the total consumer cost. I see it right here. And this time we're going to attach consumer cost to each of these scenarios. And we're going to use something called a data table to do this. And then our value is going to be all of these things weighted by our probability, which is very speculative and all that. But that's how we can build risk into the uh, the, the, the public co comparator analysis. Now to do this, I'm going to redo the model, but I, I'm going to try to do it pretty quickly this time. Uh, the first thing to do, though, is press the index function, which is should be named like a find function. It's a very simple function. It just says take an area and give me a row or a column, or a row and a column. So this because this is one, it said take this, 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 this selection of across the columns and give me the first column. If I press two, it'll give me the worst case. And since I press this F4 on the, 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 uh, the, the scenario number, it, I, I've got them all. Okay. And that's all I have to do. Now, when we then let's put our construction phase in. In our construction phase, we start the same thing. And as you remember, what we did is we took this number and made it less than or equal to this one. Okay, again, very simple kind of thing. Now, my Shift Control R just looks up to the last one. That's all it can do. So I had to press Shift Control R twice. We've got true, two trues. Now, our, uh, I think. I put an operating period here that stays constant. So our operating period again is the construction period plus the I plus the operating period and we use this and function. Go up to this one and make it greater than or equal to the two and then go up to this again and make it less than or equal to the and I made a mistake. It should have been just greater than because, and I made that mistake on purpose, so you see kind of what not to do. And it, it, there's this generic macro, shift control T, shift control F, so you can kind of really see what's 
going on. So our construction expenditure now comes from this index function. And if I change the index function to 3, how about 2, which is our worst case, then we have a longer construction period and a higher amount. And I think what I really should do is do what we did last time, take this divided by 5, and then we take this one, I'm, I'm going quickly, uh, uh, too quickly, because Napoleon said, you know, I said this before, somebody in my class told me, I love it. Dress me slowly, he said that to his dressers. Dress me slowly because I'm in a hurry. Okay, now if we want to take the future value of the construction, we put FV, and then we go up to our uh, uh, cost of capital. Now I, I changed this to, to 5%, I hope you don't mind. And then we take our construction period, and then we take our payment. This time I'll leave it as a negative, because when we put PMT, we put the, the rate again, so we just really need a lot of PMT. And then you put the period, which this time is the 30 years, and then you put the future value, which is this thing we just computed. So that's our capital recovery payment. And if we want to take this F4 and we multiply this, and in fact, this time I'm going to... Uh, uh, put an if statement. If this is uh, true, then press the F4 key, and that's all you do. That's our capital recovery. So our net cash flow is 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 uh, this, the amount we get in minus the amount of get out. That's our net cash flow for our capital recovery. And if we want to make sure it's all working, we just put the IRR like that. And then our O&M, we can put it over here again. I'll, I'll get our O&M payment and shift control one and make another if statement. If it's uh, the operating period, then we press the F4 button, okay? So our total cost is this. How about if it's uh, the operating phase, then we'll take this plus plus that, okay? And we can then put our availability in, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, how, how about this? Uh, NPV uh, of total cost, okay? We put equal NPV, and we go up to the cost of capital. Sorry for sighing, but it's hard. Okay, and then we can put the availability assumption we have in. And just that quickly, we can get kind of the total cost to the consumer. Okay, and I, I don't need this NPV of the price anymore. All right. Now, if we would change this to the risk analysis, to num the risk scenario to number one, our cost is only 3,500. If we change this to number th four, where we just change our construction period, we get a different cost. Each of these scenarios gives us a different cost. Now you could press a hundred different scenarios. And I think what some people do is hire a consultant to do this. Okay, fine, do it. They're, they're going to make better probability estimates, I'm sure, than you could. <laughs> and then you select that area, and if you want to make a data table, you can get Alt-D-T. Alt and it says, put a row input and a column input, and this is a confusingly horrible thing to do. And if you want to see how this works, if you're just beginning, you go to these data table things that I have in another video. But this time, we've got this going across a row, so we, and we have no column input. Our column is an output, and that's this number three here. And then when you do that, if you've got your formulas set to automatic accept data tables, you don't get it to compute. So this gives us our difference cost for our different scenarios. And then if we want to get the total value, we put equals sum product. And we take all of these ones, and we, you can put a comma or a multiplication, and then we get our total consumer cost. So if this was, uh, 
<sighs> let's say this was 30 no let's say this was uh, 25 percent and this was 35 percent we get a different cost or if we change the construction period to three years we get a different cost so that's how you do the whole risk analysis with uh, uh, with a little data table and a function okay and you know I think I'm gonna stop because in the next video we'll uh, we'll compare this costs to what it would cost for a private person to do this a private entity and they're gonna take all these profits out which whatever okay and then we're gonna do the same thing com compute the payment but this time we won't have any uh, uh, we won't have any uh, risk analysis because we've locked all the risks in we've taken all the risks out by by contracting okay uh, and let's uh, uh, work through all that okay so that's the end of this one